Anyway, yeah, so I'm here to talk to you about blockchain, right? Uh, <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. Terribly sorry. And uh, I actually mean that. I'm terribly sorry. Um, there was a slide in there just talking a little bit about which silos I'm from, so I'm going to have to quickly uh, come up with that. Uh, unfortunately, it got lost. So my name's Martin. I uh, have recently actually just moved here from Munich in Germany. Um, I'm, I have two daughters with Penny, who some of you will know. She's one of the early Catalyst uh, employees, and that's also the reason why I'm here at Catalyst, squatting on level seven. Thank you very much, Catalyst, to let me do that. Um, I do have some affiliation with uh, Debian. I don't really work that much on Debian anymore. There's been some other things that I find interesting, part of them, part of which is, uh, you know, blockchain, but I'm not here to talk to you about blockchain. Um, I do um, do investments, though, in startups, so I'm somewhat of an angel investor, and my focuses are on social impact investments and also re-decentralization. But I'm not actually affiliated with matrix.org, but I am here to talk to you today about avocados. No. You know, avocados, owning houses, all that kind of stuff. That's a thing of the past. The millennials nowadays struggle to get everybody of their friends onto the same messaging platform. And that's how XKCD views it, and it's probably pretty accurate, right? And we all know it, you know. Who of you has more than five messaging apps installed? All right. Four, three, there we go, more and more. Probably everybody has two. So Matrix is what I'm here to talk to you about. And that's what it looks like. It's a messaging app. It currently runs on iOS, on Android, and in the web browser, and even on VR headsets, although I have never tried it, but that's what, um, you know, they are very big about, apparently. And, you know, my children call it bullpucky. I figure I can, uh, I can use that word here. I don't know how they came up with it, but uh, Matrix is an end-to-end -end encrypted federated ecosystem for open, decentralized communication. Are we all a lot smarter now and know exactly what Matrix is? Excellent. Because this is the answer that Matrix.org gave to XKCD. And I find this to be particularly exciting because Matrix is much more than a messaging system. Matrix is actually a platform, and one of the core parts of Matrix is its concept of bridges and gateways. So what you see here actually is blue circles, which represent bridges in beta mode, and red ones in alpha, and then there are some uh, purple ones that are actually being done by lip purple, which is also a, an integration. And wh what this means is that actually with Matrix, you can interact with your friends, whether they are an IRC, Slack, Facebook Messenger, XMPP, so on and so forth. I'm not going to give an exhaustive list right now, but that is one of the core uh, um, focuses of the Matrix team. So that's sort of what it looks like, you know. Out there you have all these silos, and then we'll insert matrix in the middle and create a unified experience, sort of unified messaging platform. Grant, you, uh, in the description of the talk, you said it's sometimes dubbed XMPP 2.0. Yeah? Funny that. Yeah, that's sort of the catchy way to um, gain attention. Because um, we all know XMPP, right? But it's not, right? So XMPP is somewhat of a, of a nightmare. I mean, you guys have probably tried using it, and then you've tried to using it on multiple devices, and then you've tried to encrypt your messages with friends, and then you've tried to actually do <coughs> video talks and so on, and uh, you know, hands up if that has worked for you. <laughs> Very good, Michael. Very good. <laughs> so, Matrix is actually more of a 
platform in the sense that it is centered around a specification. And around the specification, which is actually driven by the matrix team, we have an entire ecosystem of different plugins, SDKs, clients, and bridges and gateways and so on and so forth. And I guess the biggest difference here to XMPP <coughs> is that there is no matrix enhancement proposal procedure, like there are the XEPs with XMPP, so that when you have a matrix client, you are basically bound to implement the specifications because you're going to build it, be building that client on one of the officially supported SDKs. And so you get all this uh, stuff automatically. It's also not XMPP because the data that we generate using this messaging platform or the VR headsets are shared throughout the entire network. So every single server that is taking part in Matrix is actually making a copy of all these data. That presents some interesting challenges to the sysadmins, but nowadays storage is rather cheap and it gives a great deal of benefits when it comes to multi devices and also searching. So all these things that I mentioned earlier on, history sync, multi-device, video, and voice, they are not universally supported in XMPP, but they work in Matrix, out of the box. Um, Matrix has a fragmented encryption space around GPG and OMEMO and OTR, and in Matrix, it's just one standard. Um, same with bridging, you know, you can have your XMPP integrated with your IC client, but there are very many different ways to do that. And, and then finally, it's not, XMPP is not particularly friendly to mobile devices because it's a polling approach rather than a push approach. So I showed a little bit of the infrastructure. Um, so these are the players, clients, the home servers, um, application servers that provide services to the network and to the users, and then this concept identity service, which I will touch upon at the very end. It's one of the most exciting parts of Matrix in my view. Here's hoping that that slide is actually now included after I lost all the changes that I made this afternoon. So just to give you an overview of uh, the sort of breadth of this ecosystem, you can and you should go to the website and actually have a look at what's listed on TriMatrix now and you'll get a huge list of clients and a huge list of other plugins here are some of them, you know, Riot is the big one that uh, I showed you earlier and I will show again in just a second. Anything that uses libpurple will work. I'm even using Matrix IRCD as a client. So there's actually a situation where, maybe I shouldn't go into that, I'll go into that later. Um, Thunderbird, Kotlin, and then of course SDKs in all kinds of different languages, uh, which are then being used to create you know, titanium and uh, electron apps that are also as suitable as clients, except I'm not going to list them here. So Riot IM is, a, is this web-based client that everybody can just fire up and use. You can register a Matrix account on any server that you want. So that is pretty much similar to XMPP, your home server that you want. And, uh, you know, those of you familiar with web chats or even Slack will look at this and go like, yeah, okay, great seen that before, where is the innovation? Couldn't say that there is much innovation in the UI and I guess that's part of the charm because all of the people who are coming to Matrix from Slack and from um, other platforms like Telegram, etc., they simply look at this and go like, oh yeah, I can do this and they're in. And here's what it looks like on iOS and on Android. Actually just on Android, I think. And then there's this thing about bridges that I mentioned. And one of the most exciting things to me and probably to most of you, hopefully at the end of this talk, in the Matrix universe is the way that you can bridge into IRC chat channels. So it doesn't any more matter, and it really doesn't, nobody actually notices the difference, whether you're connecting to an IRC channel with whatever IRC client you're using, or whether you're using a Matrix client, whichever one that is, and then going into the IRC network over an IRC bridge. And as I mentioned earlier, this is not to be confused with Matrix IRCD. Matrix IRCD is a client to which you then connect your IRSSI or whatever IRC client you have. 
that then acts as a client to the matrix network. And I actually have the situation, which is rather confusing sometimes, that I'm connected with IRSSI to matrix IRCD, which is then connected to my home server, which is then in a channel that is bridged to Freenode, which then appears in my IRSSI. So I can talk to myself. It's, it's very, very good. It has a slight lag in there, so it adds a little bit of realistic uh, you know, interaction. Very funny. <laughs> Bridges and bots, I touched upon them. Here's a little bit of an overview of what's possible. And you can really see that the, uh, the changes are in there. That's good. So I just added asterisk and free switch, um, SMS, iMessage, all these kind of things. Even Facebook and Hangouts, it's possible to do that. You won't be able to do that, obviously, with a, a central bridge that is currently, for instance, being offered by the Matrix people. So they run all these bridges for you, so you don't have to do it. But uh, to do Facebook and Hangouts, you'll have to run your own because you will have to tell the bridge about your credentials. Facebook and Google are not interested in interacting with you in open ways, unfortunately. You can get your RSS and Twitter feeds in there. You can control MPD. As a matter of fact, there are so many bots out there that are bridging to the Internet of Things. It's kind of scary in some ways, but on the other hand, the matrix protocol is also suitable to the Internet of Things. And, you know, just like VR is one of those new spaces and then IoT is one of those new spaces, um, I can see matrix as being a protocol that could actually bridge between them and then, you know, he'll be dragons. And one of the things that I'm most excited about, actually, about um, the UI and about um, Riot in specific, I don't actually know how much of this is part of the matrix specification, um, is this concept of widgets. So, you know, chat rooms are kind of old school. We've all seen them. Catalyst uses them a lot, and you all use them a lot. IRC channels is where open source development happens. But wouldn't it be nice sometimes to stay where you are in your chat and do some of the organizational stuff that you have to do when you're working in a team? At the moment, you know, we'll send a doodle link and then everybody opens that in their web browser and then comes back if they find the window again. Um, and then it's, it's sort of not a very integrated and good user experience. And widgets change that. Widgets give you the possibility, this is only a small selection uh, currently available or tested, well tested. There's also this custom widget here which basically allows you to put any HTML5 container into your matrix room. And this is what it looks like. So there's actually a WASAT room already. And uh, it helpfully reminded me that there's no one else here. <laughs> Would you like to <laughs> invite others or stop warning me when I'm starting to talk with myself? But yeah, it's got an Etherpad in there. So I can now chat and edit a document with the rest of my team. And I could put a doodle next to it in case I wanted to do uh, some sort of scheduling. And I'm hoping to see, for instance, Lumio um, integrated here as well, which would really um, take some of the edge of Slack. I mean, they do have some of these features in there, and then they hype it very much. But uh, um, this being extensible and, and open and and decentralized, at least to me, makes it very interesting. And also to, I guess, to a lot of companies who actually want to in-house their infrastructure rather than relying on a company to do it for them in the cloud. So there you go. Matthew, who's the um, founder or one of the founders of Matrix, wanted me to, or made his slides available and then, you know, showed me this slide, which is apparently some sort of 3D experience. I, yeah. <laughs> But apparently they're working, you know, the, the iPhone X uh, has this 3D camera thing where they can actually recreate 3D models of your face, you just staring at it, and they are experimenting or working on a project where you'll then actually be interacting with people using your VR glasses, and it's all powered by Matrix, and it works in real time. So here we go, there's this concept of identity service that I touched upon earlier. Um, you may have picked it up on the title slide. This is my so-called matrix ID, the MX ID. It's at MattDuck, colon, MattDuck.net. Um, one of the first questions that was written into the FAQ was like, are you guys on drugs? What's happening, you know? Why didn't you just write or use the same uh, format as an email address 
which XMPP does, and so on and so forth. And I guess the answer is that even though this is currently the standard of contacting somebody on matrix, the desire is for these IDs to not be human people. Because essentially, what matrix wants to do at some point in time is make it easy for people to get in touch with each other if they are already in touch through any other main means. Whether that is, you know, the phone numbers or Bitcoin wallets or <laughs> Skype, etc. You see them here. And uh, there are other people working out in this field. Um, the guys at Open Whisper Systems, for instance, have put out a, a very amazing paper, um, which sort of like provides a technical solution to the uh, problem or the uh, social interaction that you may have experienced in your life before a couple of times. You know, you walk up to Grant and say like, hey, uh, um, you know, last weekend uh, I, m I met this guy, Michael, and uh, he gave me his phone number, but somehow that doesn't work. Um, I wrote him an email. You can see the email here. Um, and that will allow Grant maybe to say, yeah, that looks legit, um, so to correct the phone number because I've already provided some sort of information that led him to believe that I know Michael. And they're working on these identity servers um, are being currently worked on. It's very much work in progress, but it's looking very good. It's looking very promising. And just imagine a world sort of like keybase.io but decentralized, where you can ask the network, how else can I get in touch with this person? Or I need, to in, I need to send that person some money on Bitcoin. Can you tell me, based on the email address, where I should send it? You can imagine the sort of privacy implications of that in the background. Uh, it's a hard problem, but they are actually making good progress. And it's, it is already integrated somewhat in Matrix. It's not being used because it doesn't really work that well yet. But this is one of the things that I'm certainly looking forward to um, most in terms of the matrix future. Because all of the other things that we expect from a messaging platform are already featured in matrix. So that's sort of it in terms of a technical overview. I'm opening up to questions in just a second. I just wanted to give you a quick uh, overview of uh, how the community has developed to give you a feel of how quickly this has grown. So Matrix stemmed out of a British telco. And the guys who were supposed to be writing yet another messaging platform at this British telco with 9 billion euros or pounds of funding uh, managed to convince their management to write something open that works with other clients and so on and so forth. Open source, open standards. Started in 2014, became First time we used it at LCA was 2016, I believe. Um, and as of March, we now have 1.8 million user accounts just on the matrix.org home server. Plenty of home servers. I run my own. There are some people at Catalyst who run their own. Um, so you have to add all of that together. The home server on matrix.org, which is the only place where they collect these uh, statistics, obviously, does 1.1 million messages per day. That's not a whole lot if you think about it in terms of the general population, but it is a lot for a new protocol, a relatively new protocol. And mind you, I'll say we're not even four years old yet. There's a lot of work that has already gone in there. Um, 350,000 rooms. There you go, 3,200 federated servers. So surely the matrix.org one has the most users, but uh, there are a couple of other ones that come there as well. And, uh, you know, Pictures always work better. This is daily traffic on the Matrix server, starting from like July 2015, where it really got kicked off. And this is until Ju July 2017, so just two years. And as we all know, these curves, yeah, they, they just keep going. This is the number of Matrix servers that are visible from the matrix.org home server. Hello. LibreOffice just froze. I'm terribly sorry about the uh, technical difficulties I've been experiencing, but uh, quite frankly, that is almost the end of my presentation anyway. So, you know, without 
further ado and without waiting for technology to catch up with us. <laughs> it's probably going to happen at the worst moment. Um, that's it. Thank you for, for your attention. Um, just a short, brief overview of Matrix. Are there any questions that I could answer? Yes. Hi, Josh. Okay. I, yeah, I might not do that now, but thanks for the <laughs> thanks for the hint. It's frozen. Oh no, it isn't anymore. My goodness, you solved it. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, of course it's not. Yeah, that's it. I know. Yeah, I think yes. you're right. There you go. OK, I can quickly continue. Just two more slides. <laughs> Total users registered on the matrix.org server. Um, that's completely made up, by the way. I didn't have those statistics. I'm terribly sorry. But I learned on the internet, um, yeah, the exponential growth <laughs> is, is a thing, apparently. So that was, that was very easy for me to do. So thanks to Matthew for letting me plagiarize his slides. And uh, here we go, back to the bullpucky bingo and your questions. So thank you very much for fixing LibreOffice. And you had a question. Yeah, I wonder about end-to-end -end encryption versus the previous company. Can you walk us through the... Uh, OK, so you want me to walk you through the Megalm double ratchet? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, no. It's, it's a very good question. It's a very fascinating way that it does it because um, so th this is work that they are actually taking from open whisper systems. The signal protocol used the double ratchet approach first. Um, but they have actually extended it because as far as I understand, the double ratchet in signal is only giving you perfect forward secrecy, but not backward secrecy. So if any key ever leaked, that would give you access to the entire history of that room or that interaction which the matrix guy said, we don't really want to do that. So they invented their own, which actually has received uh, uh, an audit uh, check by NS NIST. Um, so it's, it's good. Um, it's still in beta. They still don't turn it on by default, because uh, a lot of the times it's very difficult to get users to understand what's happening. So obviously now, what, if you lose your device, that's it, you, your message history is gone. There's no way to bring it back. And they're still figuring out sort of on the communication level how to deal with that. But uh, the double ratchet, essentially, the, the way that you can think about how it works is that um, based on the device keys of all the device in a room, a session key is computed. And that session key is computed anew for every single message that is sent and sent along with the message. And so when somebody replies or the next message in that room replies, they acknowledge receipt of that session key and then generate their own session key, which they then publish to all the um, devices. So if you ever got um, hold of one of those session keys, then all you can do is decrypt one message, that one message to which the session key applied. And I don't know how that works in terms of you know, flow um, encryption for video streaming. I haven't shown you any of this. It, it can you? Right there in the room, you can have uh, multiple people connecting via video. And it works surprisingly well. Um, I don't know how that works in terms of encryption, though. That's uh, way beyond me. Anyone else? Uh, yes, so Michael. Really early on, you talked about how the messages are distributed between the servers. Uh, and you talked about messages being on all of the nodes. Can you just talk a bit more about how that works exactly? OK. Um, so if, if you have a, a home server, and, and you have a home server over there, and I also have one, um, then if we're in a chat together, any message that you write is going to be distributed to the two home servers. As a matter of fact, it's going to be distributed to the, um, the, the complementary set of all of the home servers of all of the users in that room. Um, so that's simply the matrix protocol, which says, here's this message. 
And if you, ha if you have an interest, a vested interest in that message because one of your users is in a room, in, in this room, then uh, the server obtains it. Now, if th this is not a push approach. This is more a pull approach. And it doesn't, it doesn't mean that you have to fetch the entire history of a room when you connect. So it'll only get like the last 10 messages to make your client happy. Um, but if you scroll back, it'll just keep getting the messages from anyone in the room. So it's slightly decentralized and slightly distributed in that sense, however you want to place it on the, on the spectrum. But the benefits are great because if you remember, again, the comparison to XMPP, if you had a multi-user channel, that was on one server. You can put MUCs onto multiple, you can distribute them, but they will still only have one address. So if that one main node ever goes offline, that multi-user channel is gone. Whereas here in Matrix, a room does not belong to a server. A room is really just a collection of labels. So you might have a room, you might, you know, I might name my room, this room for tonight, Wasat, and then you might uh, want to name it something else on your home server that's perfectly fine, and now suddenly the room has two identities, and then you, it doesn't matter to which identity you connect, because it's the same basis, or the same group. Sure. I was actually, uh, you know, I was thinking about uh, taking this uh, WhatsApp channel here, and integrating it or showing you how I would integrate that with, with Riot. Um, so this is Riot. Um, and if I look at the uh, WhatsApp channel, then you can see the, the sort of like sparse history. It's not very big, is it? Let's see. Is that better? So the etherpad is kind of slow. Sorry about that. But yeah, let's, uh, let's walk the, um, the, the thin line and see if we can get the IRC integration to work. So for that to actually happen, I need to be up in the room, which I am. And you can uh, see Slack is another integration. I mean, uh, these are the integrations that are being public, made publicly available by the um, Riot people. Oh, God. Sorry. Is, is the Matrix client also called Tensor? Tensor has a, is a Matrix client, yeah, one of them. Oh, on Android, eh? Yeah, I think so. You can use that. Um, I use Revolt, um, which is another one. I mean, basically, you just have to figure out um, whatever works best for you. I see Revolt is not on Android. I'll get back to you about that. There you go. So Freenode, what's that? There you go. Request the integration. Now here I should be getting a message, which is not happening, and let's not wait for it too long. Um, but you requested sending some messages. So um, interestingly here, this is something that I can show, um, because I have just connected my web browser, and this is uh, Revolt running on the desktop. Um, and because I've authenticated as the same user, the clients now actually synchronize with each other to exchange all the session keys so that I can read the history. I'm just going to ignore this request for now, though, because they have already done this. And I'm also not going to show you what I talked with my wife about. Um, <laughs> no, you don't want to know. You just don't. Um, so this is the re-decentralized um, channel, for instance. Very interesting if you are into uh, decentralization. And uh, I can say, hi, guys, just showing off matrix and read this centralize of two folks here at Catalyst at NZ. Well, sorry.
So I sent a little message. Europe is just waking up, so we should we should uh, maybe get a, a response. Um, there are plenty of matrix channels that should be a lot more. Um, more busy, but I think you, you should probably be getting the idea. Um, interestingly, one thing I didn't point out is the presence indicators over here. So you can actually see, in, even in the biggest room, and I mean, Matrix actually has 15,000 users in it. Um, you can see who's actually read your message, and that gives you some, a good idea of who you're talking to, something that IRC doesn't provide, for instance. Um, another thing that Riot does, for instance, is uh, so-called communities. So uh, you can you can put rooms into groups, which is I think what Slack does with subrooms and whatever. Um, although this is a lot more uh, flexible, uh, the communities here, and uh, a community will actually allow you to. Let's just see. Oh. So the UI is great. I love clickable UIs as well. Um, you can actually have some sort of like home page for your community, which is taking ages to load. I'm sorry about that. Meanwhile, however, you can see that the tab here for IRC has turned red, and that probably means that in window 88, the matrix bridge is requesting my permission to integrate with the WhatsApp room. So I'm just going to say yes. And then I can go back to the WhatsApp room. And if I now, it says here channels are integrated. So if I now close this and then I talk to myself again because there's no one else in here, then Yeah, it hasn't actually sent. You can see down here that um, it's still um, gray. So it hasn't actually been acknowledged by the home server and spread into the, into the network. No, don't touch anything. Don't touch anything. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, hey, you know. Use your imagination. <laughs> That was a video. I tricked you. <laughs> now it's been set. Okay. Oh, I feel like staring at a clock here. It's terrible. There we go. And then if I answer, if I answer on IRC, And we can have a little race on what happens for, um, first, whether it arrives here or on the Android client. <laughs> because as a matter of fact, uh, even the fact that I've joined this room with my client there makes me join the room here. And there's nothing here yet, whatsoever. <laughs> it's working really well. It says, hi, guys. So the, uh, the re response hasn't arrived yet. Can I now say use your imagination? Can, we, can, can I get by with that? All right. Something happened? No. All right. I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, any other questions? <laughs>